In what is not so much breaking news and more potentially eyebrow-raising news, this is something which some of you will have already seen, of course, over the past couple of days. I didn't cover it immediately because it's not the kind of thing that I think we should get worked up into a frenzy about, but it is definitely worth noting, especially because of the person involved in particular who really doesn't have any particular reason to lie or fake this, but also is in a position to potentially hear something quite interesting. And that source in particular on this occasion is on Twitter. It's a driver in the Super GT racing series, in fact a veteran driver from the late 90s called Takayuki Aoki, and he commented on a picture, replied to it, I'll show some screen grabs here from Twitter, about the potentiality of Mategi coming back to Gran Turismo. Somebody asked, is it possible? And of course we're using the Twitter translations which you'll see on screen, so I'm sure some of that is lost in translation, and that's a point that I'm going to come back to in a second. Somebody asked about it coming back to Gran Turismo 7. He replied something along the lines of, and you'll see it on screen anyway if I get it wrong, that someone in side said it is coming. Now, that I find curious because you'll see the Japanese on screen as well. Of course, I don't speak Japanese, so I'll be very curious to know if anyone in the comments is fluent in it. This is where something can sometimes get lost. See, I can think of at least three different things that that response could mean. Number one, that could mean the most obvious thing, which is someone inside Mategi you know, who works at the track, in other words, could have said to him in passing, oh, some of those polyphony crew were down here the other day, mapping stuff out. The second potentiality of what that could mean is that someone inside polyphony said to him in passing conversation, oh yeah, we were down there the other day, or we're going to be down there today, mapping out the track, getting details, or whatever. The third potentiality is, of course, more of a, an English way of speaking, but it could still mean this, where he's referring to an inside man, if you will, somebody who knows the information that isn't publicly available kind of thing. So that's at least three different ways of taking what he said. So that's why I alluded to the fact that I'd be curious to know which kind of intonation that Japanese has from somebody who speaks it fluently. Regardless of what he meant exactly, though, it is very potentially interesting news for a track which we have talked about at length. I mean, I'm showing footage here from not too long ago, the past couple of weeks even. I featured Mategi in my re-review of the DC5 Integra, something which also is long overdue to come back. And of course, it is a glaring omission, given that not only do we have a pretty current level, by Gran Turismo standards, of Group 2 Super GT cars in the game, but also because not only is it a legendary Gran Turismo track, it's also featured in Super Formula Racing, which of course is in Gran Turismo now as well, as the primary source of Formula racing in the game. Now it's not technically called Twin Ring Matei anymore, it's called the decidedly less interesting in my opinion Mobility Resort Matei, and apparently, I actually wasn't aware of this, there was an earthquake back in 2011 within a couple hundred miles of Matei, and since then they actually haven't used the speedway to do any racing. They were due to do some racing there and it just didn't happen and they've never raced on that ring itself ever since. And of course the oval, you could say, is at least as iconic as the road course in Gran Turismo, and you can pretty obviously see that some other tracks in the series were at very least inspired by it. In fact, as recently as a few days ago again, I made an unrelated video about what are our favourite circuits from Gran Turismo's past, and I even said while listing out every circuit in the franchise that in those older games, you can pretty clearly see that they must have used the Super Speedway, as they called it, as a non-licensed imitation, if you will, of that Super Speedway before Matei was a part of the Gran Turismo franchise. So like I alluded to at the start of the video, this isn't something which you should start jumping up and down excited about, but it's interesting because it's somebody who, like I said, doesn't really have anything to gain by lying. He's pretty much just seemingly reported on something that he heard in a conversation with somebody. I'll take that with a, a bit less of a grain of salt than I would if it was a, a friend of a friend of a friend kind of thing, or a source who is decidedly less high profile than a driver who is pretty experienced at that track. It's also definitely worth noting as well, and this is another reason why I said, you know, hold your horses on getting too excited, we're pretty deep at this point into the Gran Turismo 7 life cycle of updates, and especially now that we really haven't had any circuits in a while, well on the one hand you could say, well, uh, maybe it's because we're getting Mategi soon, they're really keeping us waiting and then dropping this iconic track. That is certainly possible, but this seems like a fairly recent thing, first of all, that he was talking about. It doesn't indicate that it was like years ago, and to make a track that quickly seems unlikely. Possible, but unlikely. But then more so, why would you drop something like that 
after a couple of years of the game being out. It seems like that would be a bit more of a priority, and given that they've worked with them before, you wouldn't think licensing would really hold them up on that. Again, it's all things which could easily go either way, and you could definitely justify believing either. I personally think it probably won't arrive in GT7. If I had to bet on it, I would maybe think it's a day one track in the next game, because if you think about it, Polyphony would stand to gain a lot more by featuring it as a, a trailer track, for example, for a Gran Turismo 8, let's say, than they would for the current game. Because so many people aren't even playing it anymore and don't care as much, yes, some will come back to play it, but for how long? Whereas in a newer game, much like they did with Trial Mountain and Deep Forest, you can really showcase something like that. Imagine, for example, if a GT8 trailer dropped like a year or two from now, and you saw Mategi in there, and you saw Silverstone in there, maybe a couple of others that are due, like Red Rock or Villeneuve, I think that would be kind of a big deal. And it would certainly generate a lot more positive hype than just dropping it now, after a couple of years of GT7 being out already. I stand to be corrected, and of course I hope to be, because having an extra circuit's never a bad thing, especially after such a drought since last having the snow course, but like I said, not breaking news by any stretch, but definitely worth talking about. So I'd love to hear your thoughts either way, and this is definitely a topic where I could see people falling decidedly both sides of the issue, either really being hopeful and hopeful for it soon, or not at all, slash more my end, which is like hopeful but for a later time. But like I said, let me know down below and I'll see you next time with more Gran Turismo news. And for now, thanks for watching.